Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today, I'm very excited to bring you a review for the new Transformers Legacy Prime Universe RC. This is officially the first new mold Legacy toy that I'll be reviewing. I did review Black Zarek and Lift Ticket before this, but those two were just a retool and recolor of War for Cybertron toys, respectively. So RC here is, you know, an all-new mold. She's meant to represent a G1-ified version of the Transformers Prime character. So she, you know, has a lot of those design elements while appearing in an aesthetic that feels more at home in a Generation 1-based continuity. Now this move has been a little bit controversial. Some people love it, some people hate it, some people are indifferent. Uh, so I'm just going to look at this thing, you know, kind of going in with the most impartial expectations and just judge it for what it is and hopefully we end up walking away impressed that being said if you've seen my reviews before you know this goes we're going to take a look at rc's packaging then we'll open it up we'll check out her instructions and then we'll see rc herself in both vehicle and robot modes naturally i'll be doing some group shots and comparisons today and then at the end of the video i'll give my final thoughts so RC comes in what is now your standard deluxe class packaging for the Transformers Legacy line. Similar to the Kingdom stuff, but it's a little more oddly shaped. It's got like more corners cut out of it and everything. Give it this very disjointed look. It's got the little half window, but this time there is no clear plastic in front of the toy. It goes right through. This has been another controversial move. A lot of people aren't super happy about this. And I gotta say, I do understand the concerns. Well, I'm a little more indifferent with the closed box approach they're going with the leaders from now on, this open window thing does bother me a bit because your toy can get damaged much more easily. And if this were just like some cheap, you know, small kid's toy, wouldn't be a big deal, but it is a, about a $25 figure, you know what I mean? Like, it, it is a more collector-oriented action figure. And, uh, I mean, you know, something could damage it just being shipped around, Somebody could steal the head, you know, just pop it right off there. They could also steal this thing more easily. I mean, all it would take is, looks probably like just a pair of nail clippers. You go snip, snip, snip on the little, like, plastic ties and just pull her right out of the box without ever having to open it. Uh, they're going to be easier to steal, easier to damage. I'm not crazy about this move. I understand that it is a little more environmentally friendly to have less plastic use, but I think there were better ways of doing this. So hopefully... Any instances of damage or theft will be pretty minimal. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. Uh, but you can see the top half of RC through this little window. On the very front, you get artwork of her vehicle mode, which is the you know Prime character's classic motorcycle mode. You get the Transformers Legacy logo, Transformers, Generations, Scartomi. You get her name right here, Prime Universe RC, Deluxe Class. Up top, you just get the Legacy logo again. On this side, you get this nice little kind of split shot of kind of some full body artwork here on this lower panel, and then a close-up of her face here on this top panel. And then you even get her name in Ancient Autobot right there. Then on the back, we get something that looks pretty familiar. It's CGI renders of the toy in both vehicle and robot modes. She takes 20 steps to transform, so she is at least fairly complex. Uh, no flavor text or anything. Get her name up here, and then you get this. Now this is interesting. It's a QR code that you scan on the Transformers website, I believe, or maybe just scan it takes you to the website, that basically gives you a character page for RC and serves as kind of a stand-in to tech specs. We also seem to have some sort of, something that resembles a tech spec uh, layout here. I don't know, I think it's just a generic image though, I don't think it means anything. There are four letters there though, that's interesting. So yeah, if you do want to check out the character page, just make sure to scan that QR code. You might actually even be able to do it from your screen right now if you're you know, looking at this. I'll even hold it close for you. Look at that. You can pause it if you need to. Scan it if you want to see that. Um, sadly, all these character bios they're doing though, they're just like single sentence bios. They're very lackluster. And it was something I had talked about on a previous video. Uh, a far, far cry from the really, really cool tech spec cards we used to get for these guys. All right, and then lastly, we get some new side panel art. It's kind of a once a year thing now where we, you know, get something new on the side. So this is a portion of the overall Kingdom promotional artwork. So you get 
Optimus Prime with his back turn here. You get Hot Rod in his little core class form, RC, Blaster, and Bulkhead. Uh, there are more characters to see, but those are the only ones they show. There's also a Decepticon half of this, which I'm guessing the Decepticon line characters will have that half of the artwork on there. Maybe. Maybe they'll just all use this. I'm not sure. So yeah, that is the new packaging. I think it's pretty good overall. Uh, I like, you know, the colors on it. It's very loud, very eye-catching. I guess this kind of rainbow swirly effect going on around, like, the borders of the artwork is showing them, like, coming in through a portal. Because apparently that's what's happening, is they're popping into the main Legacy universe, which I think is the War for Cybertron universe. They haven't officially established it, but I think that was at least the intention, because the War for Cybertron cartoon was supposed to get a sequel series in the form of Legacy that was going to, like, take place sometime after. Uh, but Netflix, unfortunately, scrapped those plans. I don't know if the show would have been any good, because it was the same people making it, and I thought the War for Cybertron trilogy series was just kind of trash. So, I mean, not very high hopes, but I'd say, you know, a mediocre cartoon is better than no cartoon, because now we have no supporting fiction. But as far as I know, this is a continuation, officially, of the War for Cybertron trilogy. So just picture all that, but then, you know, events progressing, and now characters from all across the multiverse are popping in. Because, you know, that's, that's the big thing right now, right? And pop culture is the multiverse. We can thank the MCU for that. I mean, Transformers totally did it first, but it hasn't really been done in a while. So, you know, I don't mind them pulling out that old trick again. Okay, so here are RC's instructions. And you can see they're done up in those legacy blues and purples. Get the rent of the toy right here, the name, logos, all that. And then they spend a good portion of the front here just showing you how to kind of move her accessories around, mix and match them. So her little headlight area and windshield actually come off of the toy and you need to pull it off to get her out of her packaging, get her off that little cardboard tray. And then this has you just kind of fold little wing areas up, stick it back on, and then tells you to stick her front tire up underneath. So you get something resembling her like normal robot kibble from the old toy. And then this tells you to put her two little uh, little slicer blade things on her forearms to again complete that Transformers Prime look. And then you have some alternate configurations here. You can take that wheel off, split it open, and have her use it as some sort of a, I don't know, rotating spinny weapon thing. I'm not really sure what that, what that accomplishes. And then you can also take her arm blades, combine them into a round piece, and use it as like a shield. So you do get some options, even if I think the wheel weapon is really goofy. And then over here, this shows that you can also remove her wheel split it, rearrange her back kibble, and put the like split wheels on her back, giving her this two-wheeled look, almost like wings. And there's a reason for this. This exists entirely for Road Rocket, because as we already know, for those of us that, you know, stay in the loop, this toy is going to be retooled into Generation 2 Road Rocket for the Velocitron subline. So that's why it does that. Hopefully there's, you know, a fair amount of retooling. And hopefully Road Rocket gets, you know, his own weapon and not RC's arm blades, but we'll, we'll find out. All right, then we get the actual transformation over here from robot all the way to motorcycle, complete with kickstand. And then this shows two different ways that you can store her blades. You can store them on top of this back area right here, or you can store them on the sides. So you get some options as far as where you want them to go. And they both look pretty aesthetically pleasing. So, yep, there's the instructions. Now we get RC's vehicle mode, and you can see I have her blades in this top-mounted configuration here. And yeah, let's take a look at this. I would say, overall, it does a good job of resembling the character's vehicle mode from the Transformers Prime TV show and the toys associated, uh, associated with that. Uh, it does a pretty good job. Not everything lines up exactly, but this is supposed to be kind of a reimagining. Uh, but it is pretty aesthetically pleasing. It looks enough like a motorcycle. Uh, the seat area, I think, could be a lot better looking because there's not much here that looks like a real proper seat. I guess that's supposed to be the seat right there. But, yeah, it's it's pretty nice looking. The wheels have a nice blue trim around them here. You got, like, these silver hubcap pieces. 
A lot of mechanical detailing. Get the kickstand, which can you know go up or down. We can go ahead and pull these off if we want to, just to see that top bit there. Forms like the back. Then we can go ahead and store these down by the back wheels if we want to do that. So we get some options here. All right. Personally, I like this setup more just because she can like drive around and slice opponents as she drives by them. Oh yeah, also, this turns. So you can have her steer too, it's pretty cool. Headlights look pretty nice. They're clear plastic, I think against some solid plastic, maybe not. No, I guess just clear. But, you know, this cockpit area is painted in really well. She's got the rear view mirrors. Overall, I'd say she's got a pretty nice looking vehicle boat. Okay, here's a comparison shot with the Transformers Prime Robots in Disguise Deluxe RC. I know that could be a little confusing of a name, but uh, basically Transformers Prime was separated into like your first edition figures, and then they rebranded as Transformers Prime Robots in Disguise, which, you know, Prime went on to get a sequel called Robots in Disguise. Very confusing. Uh, so basically just the second deluxe RC that they made for Prime. Now I will say as far as the physical structure, the you know angular nature, the curves, all that, uh, the Prime toy is much more accurate looking to the actual Transformers Prime RC than this new one. But the colors of this new one, specifically the blue, is actually a lot closer. For some reason, they made this Prime toy a much lighter shade of blue than how she appeared in the show. And keep in mind, this figure was made after the show had already come out. So I'm not sure why that decision was made. Uh, in fact, her Beast Hunters figure was much closer in hue to this toy than it was to that one, and therefore was a bit more screen accurate, at least you know as far as the colors are concerned. I'm still really disappointed that the show, when they went to that Beast Hunter season, uh, that they never took on those like cool upgrade designs that a lot of the you know G1 or not G1 but the season one and two cast had you know taken on in the toy line. Seems like a really wasted opportunity there. But if I had to guess, let's say budget played a part in it. They're like, yeah, why are we going to make whole new you know CGI models for these characters when we already have them as they are? Still a big shame because I would have liked to see that and would have made the show a little more interesting in my opinion. Oh, I should throw this out there before anyone actuallys me. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm aware that Prime actually did take on his Beast Hunter's form, but I think he was really the only one. You could argue Ultra Magnus, but Ultra Magnus never appeared in his first toy's form, so I don't know if I count that. He just kind of started out with the Beast Hunter's toy. Okay, now it's time to do our transformation. So the first thing you want to do, if you haven't already, is remove her blades and set them aside. Flip up the kickstand here. Then you want to open these little side panels. Kind of move them out of the way. I'm going to unplug from the legs in this like little shoulder panel here. Get them up and out of the way. Then you need to separate this back wheel. And this can actually be pretty hard because it attaches fairly solidly. And it's not always easy to like get a nail or something in there to separate it. So you may have to fight with it. I don't really have like any good tips for doing it. Just kind of keep going till you get something in there and then prime apart. Once you get something in there, it'll come apart pretty easily. One thing I like about these wheels, and it's the same on the front and the back, is that unlike uh, a lot of other motorcycle transformers where the wheels split in half, these are actually keyed in a way to where they only connect one way. So you always know you're doing it the right way. You can see this one has two holes with one peg. This has two pegs with one hole, so it works out quite well. Okay, so you get all that. You're gonna kinda just spread the legs out, get them out of the way. Gonna lift up on all this. Gonna flip this up, move it out of the way, reposition the legs to like a normal pose. And then you're gonna open these feet, like so. Flip these down. And fold these up to form normal looking legs. The same thing on this side. Like so. Then you're gonna separate her arms, flip these panels up till they snap into place like so. Get the arms nice and positioned. 
We're gonna swing these forearm panels up. Like so. Now, while you have the little pelvic area lifted up, go ahead and spin it and bring it forward. And now for her kibble and stuff, you're gonna spin this around and you're gonna bring it all together. So get it to where it's looking like this, the panels are folded up, and here's just the base robot mode, like so. Get her posed up, do what you gotta do. All right. And then lastly, just to complete the look, Let's go ahead and attach your arm blades. And you're gonna do that by just taking both of them, taking the side with the peg on it, and plugging it into the port on the forearms, like so. And they don't look exactly like the old arm blades, but they at least you know, capture the same general idea. These are a little more circular looking. And there it is. And I will say, as a g one version of Prime RC, I think aesthetically, she works out. This, you know, the major, major beats are there. She has the pointed silver accents on the knees. She's got like the little black feet. She's got the arm blades. Her back kibble is even very similar where you have the headlight section and a wheel in the back. And then these little like fender wings going on. Um, now the show model obviously minimized all that kibble, but this is very true to like both versions of her prime action figures, so. You know, aesthetically, I think she looks totally fine for, you know, what she is. There are a couple of major structural issues with this toy, though. First one I'll show you is the less egregious of the two. So let's say I want to bend her knee. Let's go to bend her knee. Hmm. Hmm. The problem is there is nothing that locks this shin panel onto this little, like, pipe-like section here nothing at all that actually locks it in there so what you end up seeing is that there's less friction on this joint than there is on her actual knee joint at least on my copy but i'd imagine it's going to be the same for most so you have to be mindful to you know kind of grab both you know halves of this but at the same time and to me i think that's very sloppy design when you have a transformer where the parts don't all snap into place in either mode and they're they're just kind of hanging out there so that's already annoying but, you know, something that you can avoid if you're a little careful. You just, you know, bend it the right way. But then we get this. What is this? There is nothing, nothing locking this together. So, and it's, it's fairly loose. So all it takes is a little bump and all of a sudden she's bending backwards. That's horrible. Again, nothing you know, designed to lock this in place. You're like, how, you know, how, how does this happen? And because she's quite back heavy with all the kibble, her torso really wants to bend backwards. And I'm like, look, uh, <laughs> this is not the level of quality we come to expect here for a post-war for Cybertron figure. I mean, this is a deluxe, right? This isn't like some core class. I, I expect certain things here. And then this also leads to another issue. Let's say, okay, cool. Well, let's go ahead and turn her at the waist. That's weird. Her waist doesn't really want to turn much. What's going on? Well, you see these like very dark gray panels. There is not enough clearance to turn this apparatus, which is very squared off, right here. You can see it's colliding with them. And if you force it too hard, you're gonna bend these and possibly break them. The only way to actually use this without colliding with them is to bend her torso back. As if, you know, she was mid-transformation. That's why I told you guys to make sure the legs were out when you turned it around from uh, motorcycle mode. Once you get it in there, it's not turning far. And again, bad, bad design. I'm sorry, but just, I'm not impressed. <laughs> I Like, statically, she looks fine, but as a figure, something that needs to be able to pose, something that, you know, kids are going to play with, I think she's very sloppily done. I mean, aside from these issues, she does have, you know, everything you expect. She's got the ball-jointed head. She does have universal shoulders and bicep swivel. She's got single bend elbows. And she does have wrist swivel, which is cool. You know, uh, the hips are universal, single bend knees, and she has ankle tilt. Not rocking, just tilt. 
So, you know, at first glance, she appears fine. And you're like, oh, look, it's a War for Cybertron style toy. And then you start messing with her and she starts getting all fiddly and flopping around and things start coming undone. And you realize her waist doesn't turn. And you're like, huh, <laughs> huh, this does not feel like a toy from 2022. So I do have a few major issues with this figure that, I mean, some very slight tweaks to this design, some little, you know, notches and tabs and stuff here and there, better shaping of this, you know, inner skeleton of her waist really would have just gone a thousand miles with making this a pretty good figure. Uh, but I just, I have a hard time, you know, really feeling good about this based on what I know about it. So that's very unfortunate. Uh, I, I doubt any of these structural issues will be fixed for the Road Rocket retool. So I would expect that one to be just as much of a sad, unstable mess as this is. And I hate saying that because this is my introduction to, you know, new legacy stuff and I'm not super impressed so far. All right, for fun, let's go ahead and put her in her alternate configuration so we can just go ahead and see what that looks like in hand. So these, you just take them off, flip one around, combine them, and then this becomes a five mil peg that you can put on either of her forearms. We'll go with the instructions recommended one. And that just becomes a nice little energy shield. And honestly, it looks nice. I like it. It's got the star pattern on it. Really cool looking. And then that front wheel can come off like we saw. Makes her a lot less back heavy once you get that off. And then you can split this apart. And again, be a little difficult. This one I think is a little easier than the back wheel. So you get this. Uh, it's painted on the inside, which is really neat. That's a nice little attention to detail there. And then you just have her hold it in her hand. And I, I really can't tell you what this is supposed to be. Oh, I just want to hold it. There we go. Have her hold her hand, and it's like, okay, well, it's um, it's a pair of discs, I guess, or something. I don't know. <laughs> they don't, like, name it or anything, so I don't know what that's supposed to be. I don't even know if this was really even conceived as a weapon. It was just something made for the Road Rocket retool, and they're like, oh, well, let's put it in her hand and call it a weapon. I, I'm really not sure. My honest hope is that whenever Road Rocket is revealed, that he does have this piece, so you can put it on his back and, you know, create his original look, and then instead of the blades, he'll get, you know, his rifle or something. That way we could just pretend that this doesn't exist, because <laughs> it's really silly looking. So, you know, you do have that option, or if we want to do that Road Rocket look, which they do actually show you in the instructions, you go ahead, you gotta bring her kibble down, get out of the way, now you're just gonna peg this in right here. Just like that. Bring the kibble back up. There we go. There you go. You gotta kind of smush it in there. It'll actually set differently in this configuration than it normally does. But you'll get it, you know, just as flush against those wheels as you can. And then you get this. And honestly, I think it's a pretty good look. I actually like the way this looks. Even though it puts her, you know, further out from her uh, prime look. It is pretty cool looking. I, I could see what they're going for. And, you, you know, now you can really see that that Road Rocket inspiration because the original Road Rocket toy had his wheels across his back like this. Now, in his case, it was full wheels, but, you know, they're trying to make, you know, two toys out of the same mold, so they're going to make compromises. Speaking of wheels, I do also think it's a shame that these don't fold away better. One of the great things about Prime RC's design is that her wheels kind of folded into her calves and became part of her leg. These are just kibble hanging off, and they're, you know, I mean, they're pretty big and awkward looking too. So, yeah, I don't think that kills the look for me. Again, I think she's a great display piece, but she is just not going to be fun to pose and play with. Okay, now we've got this group or comparison shot with two other RCs. We have again our Transformers Prime RC, and then the recent War for Cybertron Earthrise RC. And I want to show you these two because this new figure right here is very much a stylistic blend between the two of them. Now, based on, you know, the packaging, promotional material, this is meant to be specifically this character, just with a new aesthetic. But it's funny because she very much resembles a bit of artwork we saw in the old Transformers Legends card game, where they made this kind of theoretical blend of G1 RC and Prime RC. She doesn't look exactly like that, but very, very close. 
So I just wanted to just let you guys see how she could be some sort of an in-between, you know, between these two. Uh, I mean, I kind of like it. I like the idea. Her colors are still a lot better than this toy's. This toy really should have a darker blue, and then a lot of these silver accents, like on the face and everything, should be pink. So in a way, she is actually more show accurate than this one, at least when it comes to just the color choices used and the placement of said colors. Now, one thing she is lacking is her iconic, like, wrist-mounted blasters that her hands turn into, which this toy tries to emulate by having just this giant rifle piece that can kind of slide over her hand as if it were coming out of her wrist, though, you know, not very convincingly. The trade-off, unfortunately, is that this toy only gets the one wrist blade. Uh, now, what's funny is that the first edition toy actually had the two wrist blades, but this one just ends up going without, which is, you know, rather unfortunate. But don't get me wrong, she still is a very cool looking figure. I like the way her, you know, kind of back wings just kind of drape back and look very, very cool, very regal. I kind of wish hers did something a little more similar. Instead, her like wings are just kind of these very blocky shapes. They don't have that nice curvature to them. But again, G1 aesthetic, right? They're doing less angular and spiky designs and more blocky G1 rectangle type designs. You might like that, you might not, I don't know. But I just wanted to highlight here that I do really like the way that she looks as some sort of a conceptual blending of these two very, very different looking characters. And I have one more comparison shot for you guys. This one includes the robot enhanced design version of Prime RC, which is easily the most screen accurate take on RC we've ever had. Uh, now her colors aren't perfect either. They made this really bizarre choice to change all of her pink highlights to this bronze color. I don't know why, I don't know if like somebody got in their head like, oh, no one will want if it's pink, but uh, yeah, I don't think anybody was happy about the bronze. And I mean, we can see here, the pink looks really good against the blue, it's a nice contrast. So yeah, weird choice, I don't know why they did that. But as far as the sculpt and all that, yeah, definitely the most accurate RC we have. So that way you can just get an idea of, you know, this is how she's supposed to look, this is what we get now, so you can see really the changes. Because this one, you know, she's a good representation of the Prime character, but not perfect because she has to transform. And the Prime designs, you know, they cheated. They had two different character models, one for the vehicle, one for the robot, and then they had like a weird in-between mishmash model that, you know, they would just kind of swap between quickly when they transformed, you know, a little bit of a visual trick, so that you couldn't even tell that they were not indeed like the same CGI model. And this completes our look at the brand new Transformers Legacy Prime Universe RC. I have to admit, I'm really not blown away by this toy. Uh, you know, you expect going into a toy line that you're like, oh yeah, this is really good. This is, this is that new exciting stuff. But I mean, aside from being a nice display piece, I, I don't think she's very good at all. And it's not because they G1ified her design. Now I do have some, you know, personal feelings on the execution of that. I think they didn't have to put her so far off model to G1 a fire. Uh, I think there are certain features to Prime RC's design that are pretty iconic, and I think this figure kind of fails to deliver on some of those. But she's serviceable in that regard, and just as a standalone figure, you know, without anything attached to her, and, you know, no fiction, no expectations, I think she looks very, very good. Um, the motorcycle mode is good, but it all really falls apart in that robot mode. She is very floppy. Parts don't lock in like they should. Uh, the back heaviness makes you just wanna, you know, snap her spine, basically. Um, and the weapons are very wonky. Like, I like the arm blades, and it is cool they form a shield, but then, you know, when her only other weapon is like a pair of wheels, I mean, I don't, what even is that? <laughs> they couldn't find a way to make that look like it does something. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not overly impressed. And my biggest gripe is the engineering. Like, the goofy weapon, I can forgive because you can just ignore it and use her arm blades like you're supposed to or put them on her back which does look very cool but you got to be able to play with your transformer right especially if you're buying this for a kid they want to play with it and if this thing you know if the knees don't want to bend right the back doesn't want to stay straight and you know you can't even like bend her, her waist properly or you know rotate her waist kids are gonna, like tossing this thing in the pile like oh you know, screw this toy i don't like this thing so it really bothers me that this wasn't better because it could have been better. It would have taken some really small tweaks. And 
you know, I'm not going to say the sky is falling because it's just one toy, but as an introduction to Legacy for me, it's not a strong one at all. Like, if this is the first... I mean, I guess you could say Blaster and Hot Rod are really the introductions, and they, they are very solid, because I think they were brought forward. But when we're getting into Deluxes now, it doesn't feel like an upgrade. <laughs> it feels like a big, big downgrade. And, I mean... Kingdom wasn't all hits either, right? Like, Cheetor was a Wave 1 figure in Kingdom, and he was my least favorite of that whole year. But at least, from an engineering standpoint, he held together. Now, you could argue that that little neck tab thing was an issue, but the neck tab didn't really serve much of a purpose anyway. So, yeah, I don't know. I just She's, she's not fun. <laughs> like, get her robot mode, pose her up one good time, make her look cool like this, and then just walk away. And you have yourself a $25 statue i guess which is a shame because she doesn't feel like 25 dollars worth of toy i mean she feels less substantial than my prime rc does so yeah i don't know um i can't say i recommend it for everybody if you've never owned any version of prime rc and you just want to have some incarnation of the character yeah i would say go ahead and buy it but <clears throat> unless you're like a completionist if you already have you know, either the first edition or R.I.D. Prime RCs, you really don't need this. It's not doing anything particularly well. It's just existing as a way to get the character out there and also being a retool for uh, a character that's much better for this mold. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, only very mildly recommended personally because this thing's a bit of a dud to me. Of course, that is just how I feel about this toy. So now I want to know what you all think of it. Do you think I'm being too hard on her? Do you think she's a lot better than I give her credit for? Or do you not like her? Either because of the reasons I said, or you don't like the design they went with, or you're just not interested in a G105 Prime RC. Any and all feedback is always welcome in the comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. And thank you for joining me for this look at the brand new Transformers Legacy Prime Universe RC. And with all that said, I will see you next time.